Hey everyone, so if you hear anything, it's mainly because I got my security, my phone right here and I have it on my security app because of course, like I've said before, my mom's off and trying to find opportunities to, to record stuff for you and she's watching The Chosen right now, so uh, season four, so that's so why I'm doing this. Um, if I have to re-record, basically it's because I'll keep an eye and see what's going on here. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to come on here and talk about something that's interesting. Um, everybody has been, you know, kind of talking about how AEW, you know, right now AEW seemingly has gotten the footing back. It looks like, you know, they're getting certain talents back, you know, to for marquee matchups at All In. And it looks like the, you know, they're trying to get back on that uh, right foot because of the media rights deals that Tony Khan keeps going on about of saying, hey, we got something in place, we're going to... You know we're gonna you know you know, make something make an announcement about it soon da da da. Uh, what this basically tells me is he's realizing hey, we may not, you know, and I'm not saying this is just speculation, but I'm I'm assuming he's realizing hey, I can't say this, and not have some not have a product that kind of proves that hey, w, you know WBD still wants to invest in us. So, anyway, yeah, uh, AEW has been on pretty much. A very positive streak. Can they keep it up for the next month and a half going towards all in? We'll see. I mean, they got two major television events coming up uh, in the next two weeks. The first one is the 250th uh, edition of Dynamite, and then following uh, that, the day before my birthday, which is July 24th, they have Blood and Guts. Um, and so it's going to be uh, interesting to see if they can keep the momentum they've gotten so far you know, continuing into those two major uh, televised events as they build towards, um, as they build towards All In on August 25th. Um, so, um, but the other thing, I'm trying to find, find the right words to say upon what I want to talk about next, I'll mention next. Um, basically, the, the other thing I want to talk about, about here is uh, they have a pay-per-view or an eye pay-per-view through Honor Club, which is Death Before Dishonor. And, you know, with Death Before Dishonor, you know, um, they're holding it um, at the eSports Stadium Arlington in Arlington, Texas. Um, and what's interesting about that is when you look up the, the venue, you go to Google Maps and all that, you go on YouTube, uh, you look on, or you look it up, you kind of do a tour, and, you know, you look at the pictures, and you kind of see that the main place, which we can assume the main venue of the stadium, um, it's, it's very small, you know, like, it's, it, it feels like, you know, just based on the way it's, you know, showcased in the imagery and in the videos, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like basically when AEW and Ring of Honor, you know, have the shows there later this month, that basically the ring is going to be on the state on the stage, and and the seating is going to be kind of the way it's designed right now for the for the esports you know events. But if you look at the other videos and you know other you know uh, photos out there. It does show that there are tables in place. So my, my assumption of what's going to happen is they're going to basically clear out the seating, you know, as is and arrange it, you know, to where uh, basically they get the ring in there, but it's seated enough. It's, you know, um, you know, seated enough, it's chart, seat charted enough to where people can sit there and watch the event. And what's interesting about this is when you hear about AEW doing this as part of the, you know, countdown, the road to all in as well as part of, you know, as well as having death before dishonor take place there. Um, if that main venue that gets showcased more so than any other part of the venue, uh, that main area, that main gaming area, you know, if that is the place they're having, um, the wrestling events for you know dynamite collision rampage and death before dishonor 
um, then that to me is probably the best decision they've made because there's no doubt they're going to, they're going to be able to sell out. They're going to be able to sell out uh, that venue. They're going to be able to sell it out and, you know, you're going to have a decent crowd. Maybe not a big crowd, but it's a decent crowd. It's It'll basically be similar, I think, to what they tried to do with Fighter Fest, but they were in Daytona. They were at the Ocean Center for that. So this is a little bit smaller. So my assumption is that's what's going to happen here. Now, unless there's another part of the eSports Stadium that I'm not seeing, that they're not showing, that has more seating, well, then that's a different story. But right now, this is basically more along the lines of something that feels you know feels more in the wheelhouse feels more in the wheelhouse of what you know tony khan should be doing with not just ring of honor but with aew you know basically getting back getting back to those smaller venues where you have at least a thousand people at most maybe two thousand at most you know crammed in so you can have a decent you know decently sized sellout that looks good on television you know, um, you know, in the process and makes it look good to uh, potentially the, the WBD to keep you around. But yeah, uh, when you look this venue up, when you look it up, it looks, it's new. It, I think it was created recently about five years ago, five years ago, five, six years ago. So this venue, just based on, you know, what I, what we've seen from the inside, Definitely feels like it's going to be one of those special occasions and everything uh, that, you know, Tony Khan once in a while, he hasn't done it in a while, I should say, but once in a while when AEW first started, it's going to be a, a situation with one of those occasions where it's going to be more intimate, more, you know, more in your face, if you will. You know, kind of similar to, I guess, what they do with the Jericho Cruise and everything, what they do with the Jericho Cruise, you know, where you're basically right then and there. And again, this is something that a lot of fans have been pining for, for AEW to do. They've been telling them, you need to, you know, they've been telling Tony, you need to go into these smaller venues and not book 20,000 seat arenas and only fill up 4,000 seats worth of that, uh, like they did at the Saddle Dome last night for the Dynamite uh, live showing and the Collision and Rampage and Ring of Honor tapings. You know, they, they need to book venues that, you know, fit, you know, fit their, um, I guess you could say their, um, the situation right now from a fan and attendance perspective. I mean, that's what WWE did when they were kind of low on business a little bit. I mean, when they started seeing business kind of shift a little bit, you know, up and down like this, you know, they would book small armories. They would book high schools and everything that, you know, didn't have grand seatings and all that, but basically were mainly floor seating. And it worked for them because they were able to work their way back up to what fans, you know, acknowledge them to be the entire time to now where <laughs> look what they're doing nowadays. So to, to a lot of people, this is a good move by Tony Khan by booking this before dishonor and the dynamite rampage and collision tapings that preceded. You know, this is a good move because this is basically what he should be doing. And maybe hopefully next, as a lot of people put it, he'll book places like the Hammerstown Ballroom. And maybe back at Daly's place. But we'll have to see. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. Let me know what your thoughts are about Tony Khan booking AEW and Ring of Honor at the Esports Arlington Stadium. And until then, I am out.